Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 241 is with Nedra from the podcast. You need to hear this. I'm well. How are you? Fantastic. What an amazing podcast, because I would love to see the research behind where people are picking it up. Are they in the front seat of their car? Are they privately listening while they're at the office? I want to know where people are, because this really does get inside the heart and it gives us purpose and reason. Mm, I love that. What, what do you ever think about that listener? Yeah, you know, I, I think that. You know, where we listen is really important. I don't know about you, but I listen to a lot of podcasts while working out or in the shower. Yeah. That's a great place for me to listen. It's when I have some private time and I have those moments to myself. Yeah, because it is such a one-on-one relationship. And the subjects that, especially with you uh, on this podcast, you need to hear this. It deals with the everyday world and the everyday emotion. So that's why I'm really excited to find out where your listeners are and how they develop, uh, you know, the next step. Because you're, you're providing the opportunity to open that door. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I think... I remember, you know, back in the day when there were actual radios and people would listen to maybe AM talk radio Mm -hmm. at their desk or, you know, in the kitchen. I hope they're listening to it in a very communal way where it is not something that they're doing alone, but it's something that they're doing with other people. That would be wonderful for it to be like a community experience of listening. Yeah, because it, at least get the conversation started. I mean, if you're going to plant it inside someone's earbud, don't just let it sit right there. You've got, you've got to be able to take what you're sharing and let it grow in an open field. Absolutely. I know that for me, when I listen to a really good podcast, I share it with other people. I have a newsletter. So I love to regurgitate Mm -hmm. like what I'm reading, what I'm what I'm learning. That's really how we start to put it into practice. Those are the first steps when we think about like, how did this apply to me? And we start to talk to other people about it. That's like keeping that information going. Yeah, because I mean, even on on your podcast, you need to hear this. One of the things when when you say something that moves me, I say it out loud because we're we're trained in radio as well as voice over acting. We have to say it out loud, loud so that it becomes a part of our process. Mm, Yeah. Say it out loud or even write it down. I am an avid book reader. And one of the things that I like to do after I read a book is just take some notes because sometimes I'll read something and I'm like, I like that book, but I don't remember why. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Like I don't even remember what happened. So it's good to have that additional information or reference point. That's what I love about the Kindle. At least I can go in there and I can use a yellow highlighter on Mm. the areas that I love. Or either that or when I'm reading a physical book, then I've got I've got something right there in front of me. I'll mark up a book in a heartbeat. And and it's like, I'm so sorry I'm writing on your book, but but you're moving me. Now, is the yellow highlighter your favorite? I like yellow or orange. Well, yellow to me is power. Yellow is, it gives mm. me, it, it, but red red also is a good thing. But sometimes red, you know, sends us all back into areas of our life that we don't want to remember. For instance, like when my mother would leave the house, she would always put on red lipstick. So red is a power, mm. but I don't like that. Mm. <laughs> So now yeah. when you sit down to communicate with 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 real people I mean these, these are not you know the you know people that have you know are experienced in the everyday world you're sitting down with real people these people don't know how mm-hmm. to be interviewed professionally but yet you're able to get a story People want to share people want to talk we love being heard You know, you could go into a conversation with a five-year-old and they could talk on and on (laughs) about their favorite cartoon or a toy. And it's that way for many of us. It's interesting. I often wonder if the people that we view as quiet people Mm -hmm. are the most unheard people, that um, there has been some recognizing that people don't listen and so I will be silent. I find that people who are quiet love to talk to certain people, right? (laughs) So it's, they don't talk to everyone. They may not need to hold a conversation in a group, but they are capable of talking as we all are. You know, some of us are more comfortable with it and others, we do have to work our way 
towards, you know, feeling safe in a conversation to be able to get some things out. Yeah. One of the scariest things, at least maybe for me, is the fact that, yeah, sure, I love sharing conversation, but it's those moments when the body goes, just be quiet. Don't say anything. And then I sit there and wonder, yeah. oh, my God, these people that are used to me speaking, what, what, are they, what are they thinking? That there's something wrong with me? There's not. There's not. Yeah. I tend to be... Um, quiet. I like a lot of quiet, but when I'm around people, I feel like being around people is for engaging. Mm -hmm. And when I don't want to be, when I'm ready to be quiet, I'm like, okay, I don't want to be around people. Um, so it's very hot or cold with me. If I'm with people, I'm probably engaging. And when I'm not, I'm like totally silent. Do you find yourself stepping into a character when you do the podcast? Because I mean, it's like, I've, I've always believed that we all transition, but do we understand why we're transitioning? see it as a character as much as I see it as a part of myself. Yeah. I have many parts yeah. and a listener is a part of me. I'm a therapist by training. So I listen to people, you know, professionally a lot. And so it's just stepping into the role of what are the key words? What are the key emotions? What is this person trying to, you know, receive from this interaction? Are we trying too hard? I mean, instead of enjoying life, we want to, you know, we want to pick it apart and build our own journey. And it's, it's almost like we're trying too hard. Mm. I don't know if we're trying too hard as much as it could be. We're trying different stuff, trying to discover the right thing. We don't know what the right thing is, but I think that's normal. None of us know what the right thing is. And we're constantly on this journey of figuring it out. What is my favorite yogurt brand? What is my favorite way to, you know, have a morning routine? What is my, you know, what works for me? So I don't know if it's a trying too hard as much as it is a continuous discovering of self. Mm -hmm. I keep a defrag journal. And what that is, is I, I ask myself questions and then I question the answers. I've been doing that since November of 2017. And what it does, it allows the inner core to have a voice. How, how do you practice allowing your inner self to be present on the outside? Well, I do something similar. I love guided journals. Yeah. I love reading books and asking myself, why do I relate to this information? Um, sometimes as I'm reading, like something will pop into my head that prompts me to journal. So as I am reading, I typically like to have a notebook around so I could just start to journal about whatever is coming up because you know, as we're reading, as we're watching TV, as we're looking through different information, there's an opportunity for us to be a little self-reflective. Mm -hmm. So I find that to be very helpful to be open to getting out what I feel and instead of letting that just being a passing thing. I'll pause a TV show and I'm like journaling <laughs> for 30 minutes and then I go back to the TV show. Yep, but yep. I'm like, oh. That was good stuff. <laughs> I, I, I love those little Easter eggs because, I mean, it, it's almost like, whoa, I, if I had not done this, this would not have happened. Therefore, and, and then I go study it and then you learn things mm. about it. And, and it's like, it's like, I don't understand why I was here, but man, that felt good. Mm. Yeah, it's in that pausing that we really give ourselves the opportunity to learn. We typically are not aware of what we're feeling because we're so used to bypassing it. Yeah. Every yeah. time we feel something, you just keep going. You're, you're like, I'm at work. I can't do it right now. I can't feel that right now. I'm doing this. I can't feel it right now. And just giving yourself the opportunity to be with your feelings is such a helpful process for you, for um, the people in your lives, because the more we know about ourselves, the more we can communicate that in a healthy way to other people. How do you prep for each performance and or each show? Because, I mean, it's like you can't go in with, with your, your listeners and, and those that you're speaking with and, and, and practice it because you're not going to get the real answer during showtime. So how do you personally prep? Hmm. Well, I like to give people the opportunity to show me who they are. I find that when you have too much information and you start to form your own thoughts about a situation, mm -hmm. it can be really unhelpful, right? Because you go in and I've, I've had people interview me and they're like, because it's like this. And I'm like, no, that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> 
Um, so sometimes it could be really helpful to allow the person to be a guy. You know, much of being a therapist is just being like an improv artist. One of the things that you talk about, setting boundaries, and, and that right there can be a, a, a tough issue, especially for first marriages, because everybody goes in with their own individualism. They don't understand that it's teamwork, that it, that really it's a business marriage, and, and that when you start working together as one, then things there's harmony. And But, but, but I love mm. the fact that you put focus on setting those boundaries and understanding why they exist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boundaries are really important for your first marriage, your second marriage, your third or eighth marriage, (laughs) right? Um, (laughs) Maybe if we, you know, work on them intentionally in the first marriage, we'll just have a first marriage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) But, you know, it's really important that we communicate clearly. And it's really hard because we have most of us have been taught not to say certain things because it hurts someone's feelings. You, you know, you have to present a certain way, but having all of those cautious things about us actually keeps us from authentic relationships when we're not able to explore the things that we really want, the things that might be hard for someone else to hear. Um, it can be really damaging. You know, I think about, let's say you're you're with someone and you don't really like their cooking and you're eating it for 10 years. Mm-hmm. That is damaging to them and to you. You're having to suffer through terrible dinners and here they are thinking they're award-winning chefs because no one has <laughs> said anything. So <laughs> both people are losing. Yeah. And we often do that because it's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to say anything to them. One of the things I do sometimes when I try a new dish, I'll ask my husband, redo or remix? Oh, that's good. So so redo is, it's great, let's do it again. Remix is like, it was too salty. You know, you could have used a little more Parmesan. um, And and then we have the opportunity to never try it again. It was just terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you've got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Thank you. You be brilliant today, okay? You as well. Have a good day.